What's going on, guys? This is your boy, Name Found, with another video. It's finally time to cover an in depth power set guide about ice. People are still uh, flaming me just because that required a lot of time to pu publish this video. But here I am, guys. Finally, I was able to find some free time. And here it is. So, this uh, guide um, will be and a really long video guys so expect a long video because like you know when you have to cover a power set of course you wanna you wanna explain and you wanna cover a, each single side of the power set for each role so in this case dps and tank so don't blame me if the, the video is just too long but it's necessary if you wanna cover literally everything a disclaimer that I must do, it's uh, uh, just one. Every single uh, every single tips and tricks, every single suggestion I'm making in this uh, video are based on my own experience playing and testing stuff for hours and hours and hours. And I will never say that you uh, aren't able to find something better. Maybe there is something better. At the moment, uh, mm, the rotations, the setup that I am showing you for my experience Experience and for what I have tested, it's the best that you can get. So, um, everything will be linked on the time bar and also um, on the first comment, on the comment section below for each section of the video. So, starting from the DPS might, then DPS uh, precision, and then, of course, uh, the tank, because this is exactly where people um, uh, are interested for more uh, since uh, i joined the us server and uh, uh, seems that the people like my tanking style as ice so i am also including a bonus clip covering uh, um, the solo tank on the first boss on the elite raid just because uh, just to show exactly what you must do and exactly which kind of stuff you have to take care to be able to be a successful solo tank in a kind of challenging instances like in the elite one so once again, guys, so everything will, will be linked on the first comment on the comment section below and also on the time bar. Uh, so skip uh, skip on the section that you're interested in. And basically, that's it. And have fun. Okay, guys, before jumping on the setup of Asmite, Prec, and Tank, uh, we have to uh, take care first and check which is uh, basically the strongest point of your power set and the weakest one, plus the base um, the base stats that we must add into the generator mode to be, uh, to be able to maximize our potential on the bot rolls. If you uh, press K on your keyboard, as usual, guys, you will see on as the on uh, the on the first one. In, here, it's linked always the name of your power set. So in my case, it's Ice. So clicking on Ice and scrolling on the top of uh, of the list, you have to go on level ten when you will be able to unlock the second role. So in my case, once again, it's a tank, but for you can be different. But if you are watching this guide, I am assuming that you are ice as well, for sure. So it must be the same for you as well. So level 10, uh, level 10, we are able to unlock the tank role, guys. And uh, we, mu we must check uh, which is uh, the specific uh, um, the, uh, the specific stats that we have to, to, to take care. And here we can check exactly which is the strongest point of our power set. So we, you gain the following benefits while in tank role. So 65% defense while not blocking. So the, in the right moment, you will press the um, the block the block button you will lose a 65% defense but sometimes it's necessary guys just to uh, counter um, a boss when he's lunging you or just uh, uh, to get rid of uh, um, insane damage in uh, incoming damage so um, sometimes it's necessary 
then you get three uh, perception and the superpower gains down. So what that means? As a tank roll, when you press T on your keyboard and you switch your roll and you're on tank roll, every single skill you will press from your loadout uh, gain taunt. And the taunt means that the enemies will uh, prefer to attack you instead of attacking your teammates. And this is exactly what we wanna uh, have, because as a tank, we have to take care of enemies and protect our group. The taunt, when you use a superpower, your opponents attack you instead of your allies, like we uh, like we said. And the player versus the player, 20% HP and 3 perception. Not covering, uh, not covering uh, too much PvP, because you already know, guys, in 2022 PvP, it's just uh, mm, something like a meme. So I am not a huge fan of the current status of the PvP, so I am going to literally skip the PvP part of the power set. So, since uh, now we know that we are getting 65% defense while not blocking, um, that's, uh, that's really good, because until we are not blocking, we are, get we are getting defense. Also, you want to always take care on your generator mod, guys, because on the generator mods, this is exactly where we are going to spec our power set. So, starting from uh, the health and power one, of course, as tank, you want to always prefer to have the HP one. I want to apologize, guys, if... Um, those modes are not maxed out, but re recently I am playing on the US server and uh, uh, I'm focusing my attention uh, a little bit more on the US server. So as HP and power, you want to always go as HP because your second role is tank. So I know that a lot of people prefer to use power uh, just because they want to have a better power pool, but my suggestion is to use HP because the base HP will, will scale with uh, uh, with the artifact and a better a better proc on your HP that that means an increase of your HP a better increase of your HP so my recommendation is to go as a full HP support of course uh, this is ice so it's dominance based guys of course um, so basically dominance is the first stats that you have to take care about ice because dominance makes your shield stronger combined to restoration makes your shield stronger so of course as a support we want to always include the dominance one as offense this is totally up to you guys because this is uh, exactly how you play uh, as a dps if you are might based or if you want to play precision my suggestion is one if you are playing ice play precision guys because i will show you uh, on uh, on the footages about the rotation and about uh, uh, the spec that you can do as uh, ice might in my opinion, ICE needs some love from the developers because it's a kind of a power set that it's a little bit of, well, not a little bit far behind, so it's far behind compared to other power sets. So, my recommendation is to play, if you want to be an, 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 a nice DPS, just go as a precision and you will see the difference. So, once again, on offense, if you play uh, Might, uh, of course, you want to fool everything as as Might. Otherwise, uh, if you're playing a Precision like me, of course, Precision is a must. Speaking about the affinity bonuses, guys, this is totally up to you and totally up which is your main role. So in my case, I am using Precision as uh, Type A and Type B. So I'm getting basically 2% uh, of more Precision when I'm wearing um, the uh, four-piece Elite Gear and also counted for the OP items. Or you can go as a Dominance if you are just a main tank. So you can get two additional percent of dominance um, when you are wearing, at the end of all, four pieces of el elite gear. For type C and type D, I have tested um, basically every single mod, guys, and I have, uh, um, I want to suggest uh, um, as a type C, rejuvenating escape because uh, you will uh, heal for uh, as amount of percent when you use a breakout, uh, group breakout. I am not going to include on my rotation, but it can be useful anyway. As a type D, and it's the last one, this is basically the most important one, guys. Every single time you are you are wearing eight piece of lit gear, you will be able to stun on AoE, and that means at 360 grades, adds around 
you. This is not gonna work for the boss, unfortunately, because the bosses are immune of um, on this kind of stun. So keep it in mind, guys, because most of the time this, uh, this type D mod can save your HP and can save your life just because it procs and stun everyone as uh, 360 grades and uh, as AOE. If you are a tank like me, guys, so people on my stream, they know that I love to take uh, aggro of a lot of ads and in the right moment that this uh, mod is going to proc, uh, you, you are basically getting one stun at uh, 360 grades just for free, only by wearing the eight piece of elite gear. Okay, guys, speaking about uh, ICE DPS, uh, the first spec that I'm going to cover, it's just the precision one and the one that I want to strongly suggest you to use because it's really, really powerful. Pressing I on your keyboard, um, opening uh, your inventory, we're taking a look, uh, a look first on the white mod and also to the uh, utility belt, which trinket, and also to um, the artifacts and augments that we're going to use for this one. First of all, the affinity bonuses type A and type B, Precision, wearing four pieces of elite gear grants as 2% of more precision, so Bates stats. And uh, um, starting from the weapon, Blast Adapter, of course it's a must because it's a free damage. It's uh, triggering every 20 seconds just for free damage. On the head, we are going to use the Supercharged Neo Venom Boost because this is a prec spec and 99% uh, of the time you are going to use the Neo Venom Boost. Only certain power set have their own um, super, uh, class supercharge. So like, for example, electricity. As electricity prec, you will always use Circuit Breaker because it's really good. Moving on the neck, we have relentless precision, 4% of precision while maintaining the hit counter above 9 hits. It's so powerful, so it's an additional buff. On the back, we are going to use Berserk. There is nothing useful as Prec, guys, to be completely honest. And Berserk is the only decent one to include on your gear. Moving on the chest... Uh, we have uh, penetrating, uh, penetrating strikes, uh, so uh, our attacks in your 2% of the, uh, the target uh, defense and toughness in case of PvP. Uh, legs, uh, there's nothing useful to be completely honest uh, uh, with you guys, so feel free to, um, to put whatever you want. There's nothing useful to be honest. Moving on the ends, of course, max damage. Uh, using a superpower, increase the damage by 2% for a short time, and the only powers that we are going to use are just a personal buff and and sometimes some burst damage, even if this one isn't a might-based one. Moving on the feats, we have Tumbling Master, absolutely awesome, guys, uh, just, uh, just because uh, we can get rid of some bad situation, we can skip some area damage, just proccing the white mod to have a better survivability. Speaking of the utility belt, guys, the first one is a common trinket to buff our stats, um, so... Uh, in this case, it's might and uh, and uh, and the break uh, depend on the build that you play. Of course, we are playing break, so we are uh, weaker on precision. So in this case, this is a 308 level one guys, but the last one have more precision for 12 seconds. And then moving on the uh, the the pet, uh, this is a totally uh, this is totally up to the spec that you are playing, guys. So um, at the moment, I have I am using the source uh, the source. Source lightly, uh, Lightning Eagle Tier 3, that's from Survival Mode. But this will change according on which spec you're playing. If you're playing the melee one, I mean the ranged one, or the pure single target one. If you want to go as melee with the uh, Brawling Martial Arts, um, don't worry, I'm covering uh, each spec. I'm just showing you which, is, which alternatives you have, guys. So if you want to go as full melee, Slayer Sunken Run, this is uh, basically a pet from the Summer Seasonal Eve. Event, uh, and uh, giving us 246 uh, six might. It's not for the might, it's just for the damage that the pet is doing on melee. Pretty powerful. Otherwise, guys, as uh, um, as AOE, it's uh, it's fine. The so slight uh, lightning eagle tire three, or maybe uh, for the pure single target, the mother box tire three. I apologies, guys, but I don't have here on the U server. I dropped it on the US server. So just in case of a single target, mother box is the way to go.
Anyway, Obs my dear friend Obsidian Chill did a video about and ranking each single uh, each uh, each single pet in the game with the parser and also with the spreadsheet of the damage. So just in case, if you are interested on the damage about uh, the pets, don't forget to check his uh, his guide that I'm linking here on the, um, on the uh, comment of on this video. So according on the spec, you must change the uh, pet according on which one you are, um, which spec you are playing. The third one, it's a tricky one, guys, and it's uh, uh, something that I'm going to cover on the rotation. It's the hologram device. Uh, this one, it's mainly used for clipping. This, uh, um, this trinket is not doing literally nothing, guys, allowing us to be faster on uh, um, on clipping with the Brawling Martial Arts to cancel the animation of the Weapon Masters to be faster and to make more damage. The last one, it's the common um, orbital, guys. Doesn't matter which skin you have. It's totally up to you. So basically, it's uh, the, the same damage for each, uh, for each skin according to your combat rating. This is completely a must for uh, a DPS. And moving on, the artifact. Uh, this is basically the most common combination, the universal combination of artifact that you can use as uh, precision-based or as might-based. Uh, the first one, it's a storage card, literally a must for a DPS in my opinion guys just because uh, this one is going basically to work uh, with the transformation card is synergizing so well with the transformation card applying a damage over time and also at um, level 200 uh, double the proc chance of the, the tactical advantage and increase the, the potency of the tactical advantage by 30 percent this is a basically free damage guys when uh, each single uh, each single tick of damage that you're doing in each single target uh, can proc the the storage card to get uh, literally free damage absolutely a must for a dps same as a transformation card uh, getting 20 percent critical uh, uh, chance and 30 percent critical magnitude on our uh, attacks it's absolutely insane to bump up our damage and also and also synergize with the surges card the third one it's the grimorium verum guys it's uh, my opinion one of the best dps artifact they ever made for the simple reason that this one is uh, is a uh, um, a kind of artifact that you can adapt according uh, if you're playing might or precision. The effect is absolutely uh, awesome for the simple reason that uh, uh, you are spawning a pet um, and if you have a minimum level of 160, the uh, pet is applying a power interaction we are not interested in power interaction because we are uh, in, so this spec is prec based so we are not getting a, a lot of benefits to apply the power interaction but it's a kind of uh, it's a kind of artifact that, that's spawning a pet just for free damage it's completely free damage at rank 200, you will get rid of um, uh, of the uh, reduce power re regeneration if you have a pet, and we have a pet guys because we will use the snow de uh, devil on our loadout, and we are also including, of course, the robot sidekick. At rank one, uh, at rank 180, uh, power interaction is now applied to targets near to the primary one. So that means when you are targeting someone, the pet is applying the power interaction to the, your main target and spreading the power interaction on every single target around him. Pretty useful and pretty good. This will help us to increase our damage, guys, for the simple reason that, once again, we will use the Snow Devil, and the Snow Devil with the Frost Beaten effect on the target will make additional damage, even if we are not Might Spec. Speaking of the augments, guys, the prec spec, uh, of course. Um, so we, we want to use uh, precise, uh, adaptive, and origin augments um, for everything. So the the top one, as usual, you have to switch them according on which uh, episode you are playing. Because, like you know, for each uh, for each ep episode we have different augments, and the adaptive augments are so useful to get uh, buff uh, as as damage and gen generally some benefits that you can get uh, as uh, damage reduction for a particular raid uh, and the kind of uh, adaptive augments that, that you want to keep uh, according if you want to do a specific feat, for example. So think about, uh, um, I don't know, um, I, I want to mention Shattered Gotham Elite, for example, if you are missing uh, 
the fit of the 50% to maintain the above 50% uh, the damage over time that you are taking, the uh, adaptive augments are literally a must because otherwise you will die. So kind of fits like that and kind of a buff like that. Origin augments, same guys, so uh, ma maximize when you can the, uh, the precise augments. The skin of this one can change according to your mentor, but uh, mm, all of them, they are absolutely the same. So rank them up as you can, because those are just, uh, just base stats that you want to maintain um, updated according, um, according to, to the current DLC to maintain up your damage. Okay, guys, speaking about uh, the skill point um, uh, collocation on uh, precision, we have basically two kinds of builds. The first one is the full AoE one, brawling as weapon into martial arts. And the second one is a pure single target, um, basically dual wield into, uh, into bow as flurry shot. The first one that I'm going to show you guys is uh, the brawling one. And pressing a key on your keyboard, you will open the, the, the traits menu. And going into weapon, into brawling, we want to unlock literally every single skill as brawling. And also unlock the brawling masteries. Going back, of course, as martial arts, we want to um, unlock everything and also the martial art, uh, art uh, masteries. And going back, we can unlock then the shuriken stone mastery. That's basically the weapon combo that we are going to spam over and over and over and over. Over. Going back, guys, of course, as a super speed, um, once again, um, once again, I have un unlocked uh, both of them. If you have just an additional skill point, you can also unlock those. This is totally up to you. But the thing that we, um, the real in, uh, important skill that we want to unlock, guys, is just the face dodge and the weaving dervish, and I will explain you why. Going back, um, as iconic power, of course, uh, prec build uh, most of the time include uh, a robot sidekick for a free damage, and we can clip uh, the robot sidekick uh, when uh, uh, it's going to to die. I, I I will show you in the rotation, by the way, guys, and also the neo venom boost to um, as a supercharge, um, just because we are uh, we, we will swap the artifact uh, when we will activate this one. I will show you on the rotation anyway. Stats points, prec, uh, prec build, guys, of course, we want to always use a focus weapon expert. 20 point critical attack chance, uh, 40 points critical attack damage, maximize precision. And usually here, guys, you want to you wanna always use 100 points on might and power. Not because for the might mainly, but generally to to get a better power pool. So as you can see, with 100 point, we are getting 10% of base power. That's really useful to um, activate the uh, Weaving Dervish to clip the animation. And 10% of might for some burst damage because we will include a burst damage skill as well on our loadout. The rest of the skill points is just a pure subability, just HP. Speaking about the other one, guys, and this is basically the single, the single target one. Once again, pressing K on your keyboard, of course, and moving to the to the weapon. We have the dual wield, and as a dual wield, there is literally everything unlocked here with the dual wield masteries. Going back into the bow, we want to unlock everything and also the bow mastery. So going back, we can unlock the flurry shot masteries and also the explosive shot mastery that can be useful for um, to do AOE damage when the boss is spawning ads. Going back, guys, um, we are uh, moving into the super speed. It's the same. Uh, it's basically the same spec. Um, so we want to unlock the tornado pool. That's a valid alternative as a pure single target one. And we want to also unlock the face dodge as well, just because we want to clip and we, we want to be really fast. As before, the, the other ones that I'm going to uh, skill here, guys, are just a kind of innate. So resist control and some power back after breaked out. This is totally up to you if you have enough uh, skill points. And also we will dervish to clip the animation. I will show you on the rotation. Going back as Iconic Power, it's the same Neo Venom boost and of course Robot Sidekick because it's a prec build. 
Stats points, nothing changed, you guys. Weapon expert, 20, 40, and then maximize the precision. Another, uh, so uh, once again, 100 point as uh, might and power. If you if you have more, you can go as 150. But I want to strongly suggest you to stick as 100 and and use the other uh, 50 skill point on the HP just to have a better survivability in case if you want to aim for a kind of fit of no die fits in certain elite raids. Okay, guys, speaking about the loadouts, about um, Ice Prec, um, we have basically two kind of loadouts. The first one that I'm going to show you, it's based on, uh, um, it's based uh, with uh, Brawling Martial Arts. So pressing a K on your keyboard and going to the loadouts. The first one that we have, it's a Snow Devil. The second one, it's Ice Bash. The third one is Ice Boulder Strike, but we can change this one. I'm covering in a seconds. The fourth one is Weaving Dervish. The fifth one, it's Rubble Sidekick. And the last one, of course, it's our Supercharge. Another thing that I forgot to uh, to mention at the beginning of the uh, Prec spec, uh, it's just one. If you want to be a Prec DPS, guys, I want to strongly suggest you to be Super Speed because with the Super Speed, you have basically um, Weaving Dervish and also that can be useful. For example, you have uh, the Tornado Pool as a pure single target, uh, pure single target uh, skill and it's one of the highest as a parser that we have in game as damage for pure single target and those are kind of skills that are accessible only if you are super speed as you can see and also i want to mention as well face dodge because the face dodge is well used for clipping so then we have Robot Sidekick and, of course, Nia Venom Boots. So once again, guys, to be able to follow this guide and this rotation, you must be super speed. Otherwise, you will be in, uh, in trouble and you can't clip properly. Speaking of the Snow Devil, um, we are getting a, a bonus damage just because the voice gazer from our artifact from the Grimorium Verum is applying the power interaction. And as you can see, the first beaten enemies take additional damage. That's pretty good. And also we are getting um, a bonus damage on on the Ice Boulder Strike just because for, for the same reason, for the power interaction applied by the voice gazer. As you can see, frostbitten enemies take additional damage. So, uh, this is for the multi-target one. Mm, you can change the Ice Boulder Strike just in case if you are uh, in trouble with your power. So, most of the time, guys, if you are spamming the Ice Boulder Strike while doing your rotation that I will show you in a second, uh, most of the time you can lack on power. And just in case, if you do, you can, uh, you can change the Ice Boulder Strike with the the face dodge like that so you can clip all three together and just keep going with your rotation if you can include ice boulder strike let's say that you want to use uh, ice boulder strike every three rotation three or four rotation of um, your weapon your weapon combo for the simple reason guys that you will lack on uh, on power and you will be forced to use uh, your solar cola or pop your supply drop because this one is expensive but i can guarantee you guys that this one is getting a nice damage even if you are not a spec as uh, might going back going back and speaking about the pure single target one guys pressing my armory activating it as k on the loadouts we have basically the same setup uh, as the multi-target one, so Snow Devil, uh, Ice Bash, uh, uh, Weaving Dervish, and Robo Sage Kick, and the Neo Venom. The only one that I have changed is Frost Blast. So now you can ask me why you are including Frost Blast in uh, a kind of spec that's pure single target prec based one? Question mark. The answer is uh, is um, easy, guys. I am in. Um, I am using the Frost Blast just to cancel the animation of the flurry shot that I will show you in a couple of minutes on the parser and also on the rotation. So this is a uh, um, this is uh, what I found the most useful one, guys. I didn't uh, I didn't find nothing else that's uh, uh, that's work better than this one. But once again, if I'm wrong, let me know on the comment section below what you think and which kind of skill you will use for clipping your animations.
Okay, guys, speaking about uh, the ice might uh, spec, um, I wanna just pressing uh, I on your um, keyboard, guys. I wanna always start from the uh, affinity bonuses. So type A and type B, of course, must be might because this will be an, um, a might spec one. So type A and type B always might. And also I wanna say, guys, that uh, the parser that you will see on this video about might, they are not realistic because I'm missing a lot of base mites from the generator um, mod and also by the affinity bonuses. So don't take those parsers as a realistic one because I'm missing a lot of base mites since I am playing as a pure prex spec. Keep it in mind because it's really important. So then what we have, guys, so starting from the weapon, the weapon is totally up to you. So the weapon isn't relevant for a might spec, but I want to always suggest you to use a fast weapon so you can launch immediately and get close to uh, the enemies. Uh, in case if you are playing, of course, uh, a melee uh, loadout. So you can get immediately close to the heads and start doing your ro rotation. As a weapon socket, of course, blast adapter. This is literally a must, guys, absolutely, because uh, uh, it's a free damage that is going to proc uh, just with the right click. Um, so you are procing your weapon damage every 20 seconds, and this is uh, basically free damage. Speaking of add, we have uh, the white uh, the, the white mod, it's uh, uh, Neo Venom Boost 3. I tried uh, to include the Blizzard, but I prefer guys to, uh, to buff all of my skills uh, uh, to improve my damage instead of a single AoE one. This is a personal preference, by the way, guys. So in my, in my case, I am uh, including Neo Venom Boost on my rotations. Speaking of uh, uh, the neck, of course, this is a might build, so escalating might 5, increase, uh, uh, increase your might by 2% for 8 seconds when you hit an enemy with an armful superpower, and this is going basically to refresh over and over and over every single time when you hit someone with a superpower. Wishing to the back, uh, once again, there is nothing super useful as back, guys, so Berserker, it's uh, uh, absolutely fine, it's decent. Uh, um, you will use this mod uh, just a few just a few times, guys, just because when you, when you drop below 35% of HP, usually your healer is ready to, uh, to heal you, so basically you will never proc this one, and this is the only decent one that you can include. You can include um, uh, another white mod for um, for the cooldown reduction of uh, reflection or winter ward, but we are not going to include any shield in this loadout because this is a pure damage loadout. <laughs> Speaking of the chest, of course, penetrating strikes, uh, your attacks in your 2% defense and toughness, uh, since the other one, core strength, it's bugged since a lot of time, so we are always include the penetrating strikes. On the legs, once again, nothing super useful, absolutely, guys, so feel free to use whatever you want or leave it blank without a problem. And uh, uh, it's max damage, of course, it's a master for every single DPS, uh, no matter if you're might or prex spec, uh, this is literally a master, so using a superpower, increase your damage by 2% for a short time. On the feats, we are going to include dashing combos for the melee one, just because uh, uh, cancelling the animation of uh, the uh, we will Dervish with the with the uh, melee attack. So for PC players, it's right, it's left click on your your mouse. We are getting an additional tick of damage. That's an AOE damage. Uh, super super good because it's just for free, guys. For melee and for uh, for ranged, we have to switch as the usual one that we have seen already on the prex spec. Speaking of the utility belt, guys, as usual, we have the trinket to buff our might. Science uh, ice is uh, a little bit far behind compared to the other power set, guys, for the simple reason that. Uh, uh, the other might DPSs are um, are working a, a, li a little bit better, and that's why I. I really hope that the developers will uh, will give ice some uh, some love, so increase the damage of uh, the the skills. So once again, uh, trinket. Then uh, we have a pet. So this is for the melee one, guys. For the melee one, we are I'm going to to use the summer seasonal uh, trinket. 
that's available on the vendor for the summer seasonal event. And of course, you want to use a pure single target one, uh, just in case if you're using a pure single target, the best one will be uh, the mother box. And as AOE, I am not completely sure which one is the best one, but feel free to check Obsidian Chill video about uh, the pet. He ranked every single pet in the game with the spreadsheet and the parser of the, on the spreadsheet. So uh, check it out because it's super useful the other one of course it's the magic supply drop that you can clip with uh, with basically a lot of powers super useful guys and of course as a dps you all want to always include the orbital because this is just a free damage Speaking of the artifact, guys, of course, the Strategist, Transformation, and Grimorium Verum, once again, is the universal combination, and it's really good for Might and Precision. The only thing that I want to suggest to you guys is to switch the Grimorium Verum before uh, triggering your supercharge, like that. So, you will open your inventory, switching the, uh, the Eye of Gemini, triggering the... A supercharge and then switch back when when you get the effect of the pollux gaze of the eye of gemini to get five percent of might to increase your damage so don't forget before popping your supercharge just switch the eye of gemini like this one and uh, uh, get the buff and then switch back fast a fast tip that i want to give you guys position your grimorium verum on the bottom because when you right click as you can see it's going basically to change the bottom one instead of the first one so position the grimorium verum on the bottom so you you will be able to switch on fly when um, when you have to pop your supercharge and avoid to lose the damage over time from the surges card or the percent of critical uh, strike chance uh, strike magnitude from the transformation card so put it on the bottom and you are ready to go so switching popping the, the supercharge and switching back it is so super useful Speaking on, uh, speaking about the arguments, guys. Uh, of course, this is a um, this is a might a might based build. So at the moment, I have the prec one because uh, I am playing prec. But you want to always include the might one on the bottom one. So once again, you have to change the adaptive arguments according to the episode that you are playing, and the origin one must be might, um, guys, because we are playing a might uh, a might spec. Okay, guys, speaking about the skill point allocation on your uh, tune, press K on uh, your lovely keyboard, on your, on your controller, depend where you play, if you are a PlayStation player or a PC player. PC Master Race, by the way. <laughs> So, uh, switching on weapons, guys, of course, uh, I'm using Browling, but I want uh, once again, I want to suggest you to use a fast weapon, so one end is perfectly fine. So, just one point on your main weapon, just because we, we want to only right click with the weapon just to proc the mod and just hold hold the melee to get close to the um, to the ends in case if you were playing a, a melee build so, so just one point on the weapon that you want to use going back guys of course um, we have a super speed so once again speed force is a must and also uh, i'm unlocking the um, toes so if you have an alpha skill point those are so, super useful so those are some innate and uh, resist control and also some power regen when you bre break out and uh, you want to use uh, we win dervish as melee so we want to unlock uh, we win dervish as melee because this one is super useful once again guys if you are a main dps i want to strongly suggest you to switch as a super power as a, a super speed for the simple reason that you you will have a lot of benefit being su super speed as might and as precision Going back as iconic power, guys, we want to always um, we, we want to always um, unlock the robot sidekick, free damage for us, and we are not getting penalized just because we have the Grimorium Verum to rank 200. So basically, we are not getting penalized by uh, the power regen when you have it at rank 200. So it's super useful, absolutely. So um, robot sidekick and Neo Venom boost to to trigger the eye of gemini and increase our damage and going back as a stats point of course we want to always uh, unlock super powered because we, we want to get the buff of 10 percent mind uh, 10 percent might and also 25 
percent power regeneration because we are spamming over and over and over our loadout and of course guys 20 point 40 point 20 point on critical attack chance uh, 40 point critical attack damage maximize your might and power and the rest on hp just for a better suitability just because you are playing a might melee build Okay, guys, speaking about the uh, loadout as might melee, pressing K on your lovely keyboard, of course, moving to loadouts, we have Weaving Dervish, Resonating Gale, Ice Boulder Strike, Frost Blast, Robot Sidekick, and Neo Venom Boost. Why I decided to uh, include this rotation? For the simple reason, guys, that uh, um, Resonating Gale, it's a damage over time, and also it's pulling the ads uh, together. Because when you will use the Weaving Dervish uh, for the first time, you will spawn the, um, you will basically spawn the pet on from your artifact, from the Grimorium Verum, and uh, you will cancel the animation, basically, uh, with the uh, melee tap, and the resonating gale is grouping them all together. And then we are striking them with the ice boulder strike because this one will make more damage because it's a frost beaten interaction applied by the resonating gale and also by the pet. And then we are finalizing our rotation with the frost blast. That's, that's basically a huge burst damage that you can get from, uh, from this, this power set. The, Rotation is a self-explanatory, guys, but I will show you in uh, uh, in uh, in the footage in a couple of minutes. So, uh, if you are not super speed, guys, um, you want to change uh, this one maybe with... Um, I don't know, guys, which one I can suggest you. Maybe with the Frost Slam for a pure melee one. Can be fine, absolutely. Can be fine, literally can be fine. So we want to start the the, the the rotation with the Frost Slam because it's not including any uh, any power interaction. And then Resonating Gale, Ice Boulder Strike, fr uh, Frost Blast, uh, Robo Psychic, and the Venom Boost. But once again, guys, if you are uh, a main DPS, uh, and apologies if I'm saying the, the same thing over and over and over, make sure to switch as super speed because you will have a lot of benefits.
Okay, guys, speaking uh, about the might uh, um, range the AoE, the only thing that changed from the previous spec uh, is just uh, the artifact. I want to apologize, guys, but I don't have the solar amplifier or just I wasn't stupid to get rid of um, just to level up another artifact. So the only thing that changed is just uh, the uh, solar amplifier instead of uh, the Gr Gr Grimoire Verum. That's the only change that we are doing just for the, um, for the ranged one. Speaking of the loadout, uh, pressing K on your lovely keyboard, as usual, guys, loadout, we want to always include uh, at Vision, Wintry Tempest, uh, Avalanche, uh, Ice Boulder, Robot Sidekick, uh, and Blizzard or uh, Neo Venom Boost. So, depend on your preference, guys. This, uh, this one is so useful, especially when you have to kill a lot of ads and doing massively AoE damage. Also, don't forget, guys, that when you are uh, triggering your supercharge to switch your uh, artifact, so I am, I set up mine on the bottom, that's the one that we want to change, so right-click, uh, popping the Eye of Gemini, getting the bonus of uh, the Pollux Gaze, the 5% of might, and then switch back so you can continue your rotation. Don't forget, because it's really important. So, um, yeah. At vision, self-explanatory, so mm, the rotation that you will see, guys, I don't have this one at rank 200, but basically this is applying uh, a damage over time to your uh, main target and also to the uh, target near the main one. It's self-explanatory. And then we are moving the rotation to Wintry Tempest to apply the power in uh, interaction and also a damage over time. Moving on... Uh, to Avalanche, and then Ice Boulder for uh, a massive AoE damage, and then popping the Supercharge when you uh, can. It's a, it's really easy, guys. It's a, a play from the traits from left uh, to right. There is nothing difficult, and I will show you the rotation in just one second. Once again, keep in mind, guys, that my um, my solar amplifier is literally rank zero, and also I am missing uh, I am missing the uh, might based uh, modes. So I'm I'm lacking on might. So the parcels that you will see is literally wrong. Okay, guys, speaking about the uh, single target might based, uh, uh, this rotation was tricky to discover because I have tested a lot of stuff and finally I, I found exactly what we need. So, tested a lot of rotations and didn't find uh, nothing else better than this one. 
the pressing I on your precious keyboard on your controller, guys. The, um, we have basically the same setup as before. The only thing that is going to change is just the third artifact. So Lyrness Amulet, it's a tricky artifact because uh, give you the opportunity to stack your might according on how many skills you press on your loadout. For each skill, it's just a stack, and they can stop. Uh, they can stack up to ten times, depend on the level of your artifact. Artifact. Pay attention, guys, that this artifact uh, it's really useful from 160 level plus. So while you are activating uh, skills on your um, on your loadout for each skill, you are getting one stack and stacking up your might according on the level of your artifact. Generally, with the rotation that I did, I made, guys, you can uh, go blind with the two complete uh, rotation, and then at the, at the end of the second rotation, you can reset your stacks. It's perfectly fine, and it's working uh, absolutely well. I, I will show you on the rotation. Speaking of the rotation it itself, guys, as loadout, we want to always include the Earth Vision just to apply the power, um, just to apply the damage over time to give uh, um, the opportunity to proc to the uh, strategist card, and also Wind Three Tempest, Tornado Pool, Avalanche, and the Glacier Flash, that's our finisher, to reset our stacks on, um, on our artifact and getting the yield back. So basically, guys, you can uh, you you can switch the artifact uh, at vision whenever you want. If you want to get an AOE damage, so before popping the at vision, you want to switch this one immediately. Apply your damage over time on your main target, uh, and uh, it will be spread on the other targets. And then you want to immediately switch back to Larnia's amulet, so you can start farming your your stacks. Super useful, guys, because uh, it's an increase of might and. Uh, like we know, Ice is a little bit far behind compared to other power set in terms of might damage, and this will help us to maintain a decent parser. So once again, guys, and apologies if I'm repeating the same thing over and over and over and over, the parsers that you will see on my rotations are, aren't are matching basically the reality for the simple reason that I am missing those artifacts and also I am missing the might base generator mods on my own base. So keep it in mind because it's really important. Okay, guys, it's time to cover the tank side of this uh, power set, uh, and this is basically where people are interested in. Science got a lot of private message in Discord and also on uh, my live stream for this kind of uh, setup. And, uh, of course, I, I will cover it in every single part. So, we want to start, first of all, guys, to... Um, to see which kind of white mods we want to wear. I want to apologize science now, guys, if I don't have the entire elite gear, but once again, I'm focusing more, a little bit more on the US uh, server. And also, I want to apologize if this one isn't at 200. Well, technically, it's already at 200 for the 
experience, I have to do just the bracket out with the catalyst and the seal of completion. But I'm pretty sure that you know it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, starting from the affinity bonuses, of course, like we have seen at the beginning of this video, guys, type A, type B, type C, and type D. So, in case of the tank, the most important one are the type C and type D. Rejuvenating escape and also crippling uh, stance for type D to have a better control of the heads, just in case if you, like me, love to take the aggro of a lot of heads to make the runs smoother. Starting from the weapon, this is literally a must, absorption adap uh, adapter, when it triggers 75% uh, reducing damage equal to 30% uh, of your HP is prevented, this is literally a must to avoid uh, damage, and this is gonna proc every 60 seconds. On the end, I'm using a supercharge dash attack 3, just because I am using the Gemini, I'm covering it in a second on the artifact session. On the neck, uh, I'm using a fortified assault, and I want to strongly suggest you to, to use the same, guys, if you want to have a kind of active gameplay and avoid to be a turtle tank, because turtle tank, it's a kind of a play style that it's annoying, it's boring, so basically you have to pop your shield and standing in block in front of the, uh, the boss, it's always wrong for the simple reason that while standing in block, you can be countered, you can be block breaked, and they can kill you so quickly. So just avoid to be a turtle tank, guys, once again, because it's boring and it's dangerous at the same time. Moving on, uh, the back... Of course, uh, we have accelerated the Winter Ward. Winter Ward, it's basically the strongest shield that uh, um, belong to this power set. So, strongly suggested the Winter Ward, guys. It is going basically to scale with Mana Cold of Force for the cooldown reduction of the shields. But once again, I'm covering it uh, in a second on artifacts. On chest, this is literally a must for every single power set. It doesn't matter which is your power set as tank. If you are a tank, you want to have always L, um, RT because it's a 5% based HP. It's something like that you are playing with a fourth artifact, so strongly suggest this one. Moving on the legs, uh, it doesn't matter, guys. I've just, uh, um, I have just put a restorative frost slam, but uh, there is nothing useful as a tank. Speaking on um, uh, about the ends, guys, we have. Uh, I am putting max damage uh, just because uh, uh, the regenerative shield isn't proking, uh, isn't proking with the, with the dominance. So we already know that the regenerative shield is proking based on the restoration. And since this power set isn't based on restoration, max damage will uh, um, will help me with some additional damage that in most of the, in most of the case can be so useful. Just for example, think about uh, you're playing an elite duo your dps die at the end of the boss fight so the boss the, the boss is around one two percent of hp you can finish him without any kind of problem so once again it's not a, re a relevant damage it's just a something something that can be useful Speaking on defeats, Tumbling Master, of course, to get rid of some bad situations, so block and roll away to activate uh, the mod, so it will do basically um, a combo, and it's super useful to get rid of um, some bad uh, situations, so kind of AoE damage, so you can escape immediately. Speaking of the utility belt and inside the utility belt, I am using the chronometer emitter. It's super useful, guys, especially when you are super uh, when you are solo tanking and you are surrounded by a lot of ads. The combination of resonating gale plus uh, the chronometer emitter, you are almost close to perma control the ads 100% uh, of the time while doing your while doing your rotation of shields. The second one, it's a must, and in my opinion, it's a must, guys, and it's a tier 2 trinket that you can get from each single tier 2 vendor in the watchtower or, or, 
uh, Hell of Dooms. And this is a basically a, um, just a level 56 trinket, uh, and it's used basically for uh, to break out uh, and to get the immunity when you need. Super useful once again, guys, because on end game content, uh, you can't imagine how many uh, crowd control you are getting. And this one, it's also useful like uh, the white mod on the uh, on the fits to get rid of some AOE damage or just uh, to rotate your shield and generally staying alive. Super, uh, super useful, guys. I, I, I strongly suggest you to use this one because you can't imagine how many times this trinket can save your uh, life. Moving on, and this is a personal preference, guys, uh, uh, Magic Supply Crystal, it's, uh, um, it's super useful, especially when you are uh, consuming a lot of power and you run out of, of power and you, you don't have a, a troller in, in, in group, super useful to, to buff your DPS as well. So those are kind of ver versatile uh, consumable just to make your life easier. Moving on, of course, um, the orbital. This is, uh, uh, this is something that can help your DPS uh, doing damage, guys. I have seen a lot of a lot of people who prefer to run the consumable to um, to absorb basically 100% of damage. I don't remember the name, but uh, to be completely honest with you guys, since I'm uh, science, I, uh, I, I have been a tank. I have been a tank in this game. I never used those consumable to absorb 100% of damage. So this is totally up to you. I never use them and I always feel good without them. So this is a personal preference and totally up to you. Moving on the artifact, that's basically the most important part and seems where the community is <laughs> disagree, um, but in my opinion, uh, this is just a personal preference for people. For me, it's literally a must. This combination of artifact is literally a must, no matter what is your power set. So speaking of the manacle of force and something that the people don't understand and they keeping suggesting uh, um, other artifact uh, and they don't want to include the manacle of force uh, guys keep in mind manacle of force is literally a must for a tank not because of the cooldown reduction of the shield not because of uh, um, the base stats for one simple reason just because the artifact absorb 50 percent of the incoming damage and reapply them over next five seconds at rank 200. What that means? That means if you are getting, for example, a single damage that's, uh, let's say, 100k, right? The artifact is splitting the damage to 50k and reapplying the other 50k in the next five seconds. So in our case, we will mitigate the damage while rotating the shields. This, the suggestion that I want to give you guys, it's just don't listen to people who say that the Manacle of Force is uh, completely useless for tank because uh, they don't know what they are talking about. So this is literally a must. There is no way that you're going to tank an elite content, an endgame content without including Manacle of Force. Actually, you can, but Manacle of Force will... Uh, will do a good job for you and will make your life way easier, believe me, guys. Moving on, the, the second one, it's the Eye of Gemini, and uh, this is a pretty common on the meta in, uh, in, uh, in this period, guys, since I'm filming this video, super useful, because it's basically 4% of everything, prec, dominance, restoration, might, uh, and vitalization, and you have everything that you need. So you have restoration, and you have also the dominance, because um, ice is based on dominance, right, guys? So you have basically everything, plus the fact that you can trigger the supercharge and while standing in the Pollux gaze, that's basically the green the green uh, eye that is popping with the, the green circle, while standing inside the circle, you are getting basically 3% of HP re restoration and 2% of supercharge every second. That is going basically to scale with the white mod that we are using on the head. So, 
2.5% supercharging back when you use uh, dash attack in my case because I uh, you are uh, I am super speed but just in case if you are acrobatics you can use um perfect poise for example and it's gonna scale with the eye of gemini to get back your supercharge so basically if you're doing the rotation in the correct way and you are if you are always standing in the Pollux gaze, you will be always perma supercharge full every single time. Moving on, guys, and once again, I want apologies if this one isn't ranked 200 yet, but I have to do the bracket out. Mystic Symbol of the Seven, literally one of the best artifacts for tank, in my opinion, with the Manacle of Force, because this is super useful to stack up your defense. The more enemies you will have around you, the more defense you will stack. Literally a must, if you like me, like to take the aggro of uh, a lot of ads, controlling them while your DPSs are killing them. So this combination, in my opinion, guys, it's the best one, no matter which is your power set. You can be atomic, you can be rage, you can be earth. Um, so no, no, no matter what is your power set, in my opinion, and this is based on my experience, this uh, combination is literally a must. I forgot to uh, to say something, guys. So, uh, and uh, this is something that uh, belongs to the ice power set. When you are activating one shield, as you can see, my body is being surrounded by uh, by the ice. And if if you press F one on your keyboard and scrolling to the bottom, you will see the effect of the ice armor. So it's an additional 35% defense that you have. And this one is going basically to be refreshed every single time when you rotate your shield. So as you can see, I am losing the effect right now. And then if I pop once again, another shield is going to be popped up once again. So while rotating your shield, you will have always a perma 35% additional defense uh, just without doing basically nothing. So instead of uh, uh, making them expire. I'm popping once again and I am just uh, um, re renewing my ice armor to get a perma buff. This is something that I've, I, I forgot to mention at the beginning, but it's something to keep it in mind. Speaking of um, augments, guys, uh, or, or better, before going to, um, to uh, the augments, uh, it's really good to take a look on the, the stats and how they work. So, Ice is based on dominance, but we know already that in this game, re restoration is super useful to, um, uh, to make your shield stronger. So, dominance, so speaking of dominance, is combined with the restoration to determine the potency of healing and shield abilities. At the high level, the dominance must be higher than the enemy will power. So that means, for example, uh, if you're playing an, an instance where you have a minimum amount of suggested dominance, your dominance must be equal, if not superior, of the base dominance suggested by the instance. Otherwise, you will not be able to take the aggro of the ads. At high levels, dominance must be uh, higher than enemy willpower for crowd control effect to be effective, like we said. So... Healing, and this is not our case, it's a base healing multiplier, 30% restoration plus 25% dominance. The, the real thing that we need to know and keep in mind, it's a shield, because this is a power set based on shield rotations. Base shield mul multiplier, it's 112.5% restoration based, plus 100%, 150% of the entire dominance. So basically, once again, the um, dominance plus the restoration are working together to make your shield stronger. And as you can see on the restoration, it's the same. So as a restoration for the shield, you are, get, uh, you are getting a base shield multiplier 112.5% uh, restoration plus 150 dominance. So basically taking... Uh, um, those stats uh, as a restoration combined with the dominance to make your shield stronger. Keep it in mind, guys, because this is something this is something that you must know to be knowledgeable about your power set. Moving on the augments, guys. Of course, uh, this is um, this is a tank power set, so everything must be as uh, dominance. So 
Uh, the adaptive arguments are totally up on which kind of uh, east, uh, instance slash DLC uh, episode slash episode that you are playing. So you will always change those according to which episode you are playing. So in my case, I have imprinted the armory with uh, um, the totality uh, inductor one. It's uh, the last DLC. So I'm, I'm filming this video. It's Leg uh, Legion of, uh, of Doom. Super useful because they have uh, um, kind of of passives and they are useful for the content that you are playing and you want to always switch them according on which episode you are playing so dominating one so dominance one as uh, um, adaptive one and also uh, dominating for the base um, for the um, Origin augment based one. This is really important, guys, because once again, your power set is based on dominance. So the more dominance that you can get, the better uh, the better damage your shield will block. Keep it in mind because it's really, really, really important, guys. Okay, speaking about the skill point of. Of course, uh, pressing K on your keyboards, guys, uh, and starting with the weapon, of course. Uh, I want to always uh, suggest uh, the one end because the one end it's a kind of weapon that's really fast on launch, especially to interrupt uh, a boss or getting the aggro immediately to get close to the enemies. So I want to su suggest uh, a one end or anyway a fast weapon like shield, for example. It's pretty good, but for my personal preference will be always one end. So I am uh, mm, specking basically one two three four five skill points on the weapon just just because of uh, flip slash as you can see on the footage at the end of this video um it's really useful to control the head so this combo basically um um, bring the heads in into the air, giving you uh, two seconds where you can uh, rotate your shield or activate the consumable to control them again. And it's a super useful just for a pure crowd control effect, not for, for the damage, of course. Going back, guys, of course, the one end is the only one that we are going to skill. Going back on super speed, I am unlocking the speed force, of course, the dash attack, because this build is built around Eye of Gemini. Face dodge can be useful in certain situation. And also, if you have additional skill point, those innates are always good. So those are basically the, resist, the resistance against the crowd control effect, and the bottom one are just power regen when you break out from a crowd control. So once again, if you have uh, an alpha skill point, just skill them. Otherwise, you can skip without any problem. Going back, guys, on the iconic power, I want to suggest you to unlock uh, the Amazonium Deflection and the Mesmerizing Lazo because they can be useful in certain situations when you have to solo tank and lead content and you need additional defense. So. Think about, for example, the specific uh, specific feats. Uh, so, flash to the future, where the tank have to use the Amazon deflection to avoid to to get one shotted, and the mes mesmeric lezo. If we are talking about the sixth dimension raid, to take the aggro of the the snipers, uh, and your group can immediately kill them, avoiding a guarantee wipe. So, those are um, useful. Absolutely useful, and uh, the hard light shield, of course, is a must because it's the best. Um, it's literally the best uh, personal shield in the game, absorbing an insane uh, amount of damage. Keep it in mind, guys, that this one is classified in the game as an healer shield. I have literally no clue why it's uh, considered. Uh, an healer shield. There must be a reason, but whatever. It's just to let you know. Going back on um, stats point, of course, guys, here is where, um, where people are struggling. So, um, most of the time people um, want to spec as superpowered, but I am always against this kind of decision for the simple reason that hybrid, in my opinion, as a support role, uh, is, always, uh, is always a must. Only in certain kind of situation you have to spec super powered. Just because if you don't spec as hybrid, losing this bonus, five percent dominance and five percent restoration for a tank, 
specifically talking about uh, uh, kind of power set like fire and ice. Uh, it's just uh, too much. So losing this buff, guys, a 5% dominance that is going to scale the entire uh, dominance, the entire stats, uh, and uh, also for the restoration, it's a huge loss in my opinion. To be completely honest with you guys, I never had a single problem to uh, lack in, in power when I'm playing content. Uh, absolutely, just because I can always pop my solder and I can always pop my supply drop, so never been in a bad spot, uh, speaking of power. But instead, getting 5% of more dominance and 5% of more restoration makes my shield stronger and capable to tank more damage, for sure. I'm expecting 10 points on critical attack chance, critical attack damage. Technically, you can go as critical healing chance and critical healing magnitude. I'm not doing it, guys, because on the on the ends, I am holding max damage, so I'm not going for the regenerative shield. You can and get some uh, HP back because it's scaling uh, based on restoration. This is a personal preference, guys. So as ice is completely useless, the re re regenerative shield, you, you will get just a, a tick of healing that it's completely irrelevant. So that's why I'm specking a 10 point and 10 point here. Still a useless damage, guys, because as a tank you will never have... Uh, so your damage will be never comparable to a DPS one. I'm just specking a 10 point and 10 point uh, here just to be able to reach the bottom and maximize, of course, the most important stats that we have on our power set as a dominance. So 310 point here and also uh, 150 point here for the amount of skill point that I have. If you have less skill point, guys, just uh, um, make sure to first maximize uh, the, the dominance. If you're really low skill point make sure guys to um to um do a 50 50 between dominance and restoration will work as well i have tried as well to under the skill point on the restoration but to be completely honest with you guys i didn't see uh, any difference um, and instead of wasting a 50 skill point on uh, more restoration i am always prefer to uh, maximize the hp so put the um, other skill point that we have on the HP because the HP based is going basically to be bumped up by the white mod that we have here as you as you seen absolutely and it's always a better generally a better suitability for your uh, tune. So um, in order, so basically in order, it's just a 10, 10, maximize your, your dominance, 100, 150 skill point on the restoration is enough. Once again, I didn't see any difference as 200. And of course, the other skill points are going literally to the HP for a better suitability. Okay, guys, speaking about the loadout as a tank, uh, this is a little bit tricky just because we have unlocked some additional skills on the iconic power. And uh, generally, let's say that this rotation, <clears throat> so basically in uh, Inescapable Storm, Winter Ward, Reflection, Resonating Gale, Hard Light Shield, and that dash attack it's a universal loadout uh, to uh, be able to uh, tank basically uh, literally every single content in the game as a solo tank of course uh, this is not gonna happen for stage three slash critical well actually you can tank the stage three uh, if you your group is really good to launch the the snipers and got a, a really good barn on on the ads so you have literally no problem Kind of skills that you can change, guys. So th this is uh, basically um, the AOE pool. Winter Ward, the personal shield, the strongest one that you can have. And we are also using the mod, if you don't, uh, if you remember, guys, accelerated the Winter Ward to have a better cooldown reduction that is going to scale with the Mana Color Force. And also... And also reflection always uh, always good to have uh, just because this is a power set based on shield, resonating gale and this is a kind of skill that maybe most of the time people aren't using. This is an excellent crowd control skill just to group uh, group the ads uh, together so your DPS can kill them so quickly. Uh, also can't miss the hard light shield because it's uh, basically the strongest shield in the game as a solo shield. Shield. And 
Last but not least, dash attack, just because we are uh, running I the Eye of Gemini to proc the Pollux Gates. Kind of change that you can do, guys, once again, depend on the content that you are playing and depend if you are uh, solo, uh, solo tanking it. But uh, generally, let's say that you can change Resonating Gale, for example, if you don't, don't want to lose any, any shield. So you can change the Resonating Gale, for example, for the Face Dodge or maybe for the Amazonium Defense. Reflection. Once again, it's totally up to the content that you're playing. I have seen also, um, and I have tested myself, um, uh, that in most of the time, guys, most of the time, you can get rid of one shield. That's the Reflection one to use, for example, um, the Frost Slam to have a better control of the ads, especially if you are uh, solo tanking the um, new Elite Raid. So basically with the Frost Slam, with the Resonating Gale, and also using the consumable, the Chronometer Emitter, most of the time you will be able to perma control the ads that basically surrounding you and also rotating your shield while taking damage so this is a really good guys because at the end of all you have a winter ward that's a shield you have an art light shield and also you have the dash attack that is another shield of course um, stacking on your dominance and your restoration while uh, triggering the uh, pollux gaze of the eye of Gemini. So, kind of uh, variants that you can do on your loadout, guys. Once again, it depends on the content that you are playing. Um, I have tested this rotation in um, a solo tank on stage three, and I was feeling so good, to be completely honest with you guys. So, uh, controlling the ads, Frost Slam, Resonating Gale, and also the Consumable makes my life way easier. Absolutely, one million percent. But generally, let's say that the rotation that you must run according, uh, um, according to the base loadout, it's always, uh, it's always this one. You have one control um, as a resonating gale, and also you have the, the consumable, plus another crowd control that is the dash attack. Because when you are activating the dash attack, guys, you are, of course, controlling the ads because they are because you are pushing them on, on the ground for two seconds, and this is another additional control that, that you can have. I forgot to mention, apologies, guys. So, generally, let's say that this rotation is... Um, the uh, the one that you want to keep on your um, on your armory imprinted armory and then you can switch according on the content or the raid alert that you are playing. Another thing that I want to say, guys, and this is basically a, a bonus um, because uh, most of the time I have seen people are doing this mistake and that's a huge mistake for um, for a tank. Let me restore the UI so quickly, show UI during the gameplay, accept them. So basically what uh, people are doing, and this is something that you have to avoid. I have seen people doing this, guys. One and two. What you are doing in this, uh, in this way? Basically you are um, overwriting shields. So I have activated the Winter Ward and also the, the Reflection, but... Activating the second one, I am cancelling completely the effect of the first shield. So basically, I am losing my strongest shield for no reason. This is something that you have to avoid, guys, because I have seen people struggling with, uh, with this stupid mistake. And uh, most of the time, people are panicking just because they are... Um, just because they are taking some damage, they are panicking and doing something like that, for example. This is the worst thing that you can do on an ice tank, guys, because as you can see on the, lo the loadout, everything is under, uh, under cooldown, and from now on, if I'm taking damage, I am, not, uh, I am basically not covered by any shield, and most of the time, I can die. It's really easy that I can die. So... Thing to avoid, guys, it's just to overwrite the shield because keep it in mind that the effect that you will get on the shields, it's just the last one that you have activated. So in this case, once again, if I am activating both of them, I'm canceling the first one and activating just the last one. So avoid to do this mistake, guys, and you, you will see that you can be a successful tank. 
I know, guys, most of the time people are panicking just because they are taking a, a lot of damage happened to me at the beginning when I specced as ice. And that's why you want to always improve yourself to, to play the power set in the most efficient way. Another thing that I have already mentioned... Uh, it's just one, guys. So uh, every single time you are activating the, the shield, you are proccing your um, your ice armor. So pressing uh, F1, scrolling on the bottom. So we have the ice armor. That's its 35 uh, defense. So while rotating your shield, keep your ice armor up, guys, because it's basically a 35% defense uh, just for free that, that you are getting. So this one will be activated every single time you are you are uh, activating one shield. So the Arlight shield is not um, is not included, by the way. Okay, keep it in mind, guys, because it's really, really important. Is this not uh, in included? I am not sure, guys. So, actually, I have my uh, my ice armor. So, that, that's actually interesting. So, I learned something new. See, guys? So, <laughs> so I learned something new. So, while... Uh, so, seems that the ice armor is working with the hard light shield. Let me check one second, guys. Yeah, it's working as uh, Art Light Shield. Uh, if I am not wrong, guys, uh, they have changed this one since recently because previously the Ice arm uh, Armor wasn't proccing uh, with the Art Light Shield. But probably I can be wrong. And if I'm wrong, let me know in the comment section below. So once again, guys, maintain your rotation of the, the shield. So um, full your loadout, however you feel comfortable. I always recommend and suggest to start with the strongest shield that you have, especially if you are taking the aggro of uh, a lot of ads. So this one will protect you by 100 and 100 and 100 of K of, uh, of damage from, from the ads. And then when this one run over, you can pop the other one and keep, uh, keep doing your rotation while controlling that. Keep it in mind, guys, because it's really important and it's a kind of common mistake that I have seen that people are struggling with. Very easy to fix. It's just about to practice. Okay, guys, finally, the video is over. So I know already that the video is just too long because I'm always getting flamed by people just because my in-depth power set guides are so long. But this is literally a must if you want to cover each single side, each single corner of a power set on each single uh, role. So apologies, guys, but that was a must. All right, for this guide, guys, it's literally everything. I really hope that this guide will be useful uh, for you guys. I am leaving you with the, the, a footage of a solo tank of uh, stage one of the, um, the last Elite um, Raid, since I'm filming this video. It's uh, the sixth dimension Elite as a solo tank. I'm just showing you just the first boss because the first boss is the most, uh, in my opinion, guys, is just the most challenging one and uh, in this boss fight uh, you can test your ta your tanking skill and it's a really good practice so good luck uh, for uh, as a solo tank guys i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure that you will be a better tank because improve yourself like i'm always saying it's a must if you want to be a better player Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I once again, I really hope that you um, that you like what I'm doing for this universe online, and I really hope that this guide will be useful for you. Don't forget that that I'm streaming every single day from Monday to Friday from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. Central European time on Twitch. The link is on the description below. Thank you so much once again for watching this video, guys. And of course, like every other single time, we will see in the next one.